Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'd like to go over a very important topic with you that's going to help you not only on the MCAT, the DAT, and the OAT exam, but also when you get to biochemistry, and that's going to be NADH. If we look at the board, I wrote to you that NADH is an electron carrier. Now, glucose is not broken down, as you guys all know, in a single step, but rather in a cascade of many steps. And we've talked about all this. As electrons are removed from glucose, they associate with a hydrogen atom. And the electron carrier is going to be an oxidizing agent called NAD+. Now, if you guys remember, we saw NAD+. Where did we see it? We saw it in glycolysis. We saw it in the TCA cycle. That's the two that we concentrated on. When NAD+, gets two electrons and a proton, it forms... NADH. Now, NADH is going to function as a reducing agent, and I'll show you how it works in a few minutes. As a reducing agent, it's going to donate electrons and is used primarily for what? To make ATP. And if you remember, we saw NADH, it went to where? The electron transport system, and that's where most of the ATP is made. Guaranteed type of question on the exam. About 88% of all the ATP is going to come from the electron transport chain. Now, I want you to just look on the blackboard. This is the way we normally draw the structure of NAD plus in biochemistry. Notice it's got a pyridine ring and it's got an amide. Now, I wrote the word R here. I don't think you want to see what's beyond that. It's a gigantic molecule and it contains ribosugar, phosphate, it could phosphate groups um, and the purine adenine. However, the reaction only occurs on a very small portion of the molecule. That means that the rest of the molecule is binded to the enzyme. So therefore, we don't need to worry about the rest of the molecule. All the action, as you're gonna see, is gonna be in one main position. Now, ultimately, oxygen will be the final electron acceptor. Make sure you know that, that's a guaranteed question. If I ever say, who's the final electron acceptor? It's oxygen, but this is gonna start the ball rolling. Now, let me show you how this works. Say we took an alcohol and we oxidized it to the aldehyde. Now, you remember we did this in organic chemistry. How did we go from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde? We could have used what? PCC, we could have used the Collins reagent, we could have used the Swern oxidation, um, we could have used Desmarnin. So these were the four main ways that I would take a primary alcohol into an aldehyde. But you don't have the Desmarnin reagent flowing through your veins, right? You don't have PCC flowing through your veins. What you have is alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme in NAD+. So they would fu that would function as your oxidizing agent, the NAD+. Now, as a good general rule, if you remember there's another agent and that was called FAD, right? We're gonna, we're gonna stick to NAD tonight, but as a good rule of thumb, carbonyl oxidation, meaning you're going from say an alcohol to an aldehyde, often involves NAD+ as well as a dehydrogenase enzyme. So if you ever see the word dehydrogenase, I want you to think there's gonna be an oxidation or a reduction reaction going on. And if you're oxidizing an alcohol to a, say an aldehyde, it almost certainly for your purposes will involve NAD plus system instead of the FAD system. Not always, but a good general rule. Now I want you to look at how it happens. What I'm gonna do is this is gonna represent our oxidizing agent. That's what I had before the NAD+. Now watch what we call the hydride transfer. The chemistry here is very easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer a hydride atom to this position here. These electrons move in, and that would give me this species here. Now I want you to make sure you can follow those arrows. This goes here. This goes here, then obviously this electron moves here, and this moves here. So that would give me my protonated carbonyl, and then we would simply deprotonate, and there's our aldehyde. And then what do you have left? Well, if you just follow the arrows, the NAD plus has picked up electrons, 
right? It's picked up um, an H here and it became what? NAD, NADH. So that was pretty easy. So as you can see, the action was just on this position right here, um, which is number four, right? If we call this uh, first position, that would be the fourth position. Now, if you want to go in reverse, what did I teach you in Orgo? Whenever we do a reaction in the forward direction, we always want to try to look at it in the reverse. reverse. Now, how would we do a reduction? Well, instead of using NAD+, plus, what would I use? NADH. And again, as you can see, there's the hydride transfer. Boom, we're gonna open it up. It's a simple nucleophilic addition. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna pick this up. There's the primary alcohol, and you're left with the NAD plus again. Notice that NADH here was a what? A reducing agent. And if you remember in organic chemistry, reducing agents that would reduce down carbonyls would be like NABH4 or LIALH4 or the zinc borohydride. I hope this gives you a good idea of how these reagents work. Like I said, they're mostly seen when we talk about glycolysis in the Krebs cycle, but there's other cycles that they appear in for our purposes. Krebs cycle, glycolysis, and of course, ultimately, electron transport system. All right, I hope this helps on an area that's always confusing, but if you understood the chemistry here, you'll be able to ace this when you get to biochemistry and have a good understanding of the concepts. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.